I'm Judy Shaw for NYSE Floor Talk. Joining me today is LD Salmonson. He is co-founder and CEO at Cherry. LD, it's wonderful to have you here. Thanks for joining me today. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm excited to talk with you, but before we do that, just a quick note to our viewers, this interview is for informational purposes only. The NYSC doesn't recommend any investments or investment strategies. All right, so LD, tell me, what is the historical context of the real estate market that created a need for a company like Cherry? Yeah, it's great, and thanks for having me again. Um, when I think about financial services throughout the 70s, 80s, and 90s, we created this massive infrastructure, part of it is what we're sitting in here today, to be able to help companies bring a lot of data together to be able to answer fairly straightforward questions, right? And at the end of the day, I want to make better investment decisions, better underwriting decisions, better management decisions. In the real estate industry, we haven't had that infrastructure stage, right? So here we are in 2020, and we never went through that 70s, 80s, 90s of the ticker revolution. We never went through electronic trading. We never went through the data revolution. And here we are in 2020, you have to catch up, you know, 40, 50 years of evolution. And in many ways, that's horrible because we have to start from scratch. But in other ways, it's very exciting because all these different siloed solutions that already exist in the industry for data and for applications that serve essentially the largest asset class in the world, right? Real estate is by far the largest asset class in the world. There are all these cool things that, you know, we're not really starting from scratch. There are really cool things, but if you bring them together, we're able to really um, take the entire industry to where financial services is today. So, that's kind of the historic content. That's why I'm excited about doing this work every day, but um, there's still a lot of work to do to get to where we are today. So now tell me, how are enterprise real estate companies setting themselves up for a lasting competitive advantage, and how were their actions shape, change the real estate industry in general? Yeah, sure, and we really, I don't say only, but we predominantly focus on very large asset managers, usually that 20 billion and above. We manage over about 3 trillion assets under management in total. And for those large folks, it's a story of first consolidation, right? So they're buying a lot more assets, they're buying other companies, so they're multi-asset class, multi-geography, multi-vertical, and that creates a lot of complexity across the, those large organizations. And this is also true for big banks and underwriters on the insurance side, right? They're dealing with a lot more complexity than they did before. And if I'm able to do something that my peers can't do, I'm winning, right? We all have the same cost of capital, unfortunately. We all have essentially the same quality of talent. The difference is what we can do behind the scenes. So if they're able to bring together more data sets than their peers, be able to turn those data sets into, into insight, to actual insight faster than their peers, they win and have a competitive advantage. And there's also the case where the earlier we do this and the faster we do this, the more we win, right? So when we think about the big winners of the financial services revolution, right? Citadel wasn't there before, but these are the people who kind of came out of that, that winning stage. And I'm pointing here obviously because they're behind me. Uh, in a real estate industry, everybody wants to be the Two Sigma, the Renaissance, the Citadels of the world. They don't want to be the firms that we no longer think of their names because they're, they're off the map. Um, being able to do this early, being able to do this fast is what guarantees them to be those names that we remember down the road. All right, and finally, LD, what does the future look like for the industry given the acceleration of tech and data adoption? Yeah, so in many ways, COVID created this, this accelerant in, in a lot of the adoption, right? So uh, prior to COVID, a lot of real estate was very local in many ways. Um, a lot of risk aversion around trying new ideas, a lot of, you know, I've been doing this for three generations, it's probably going to work. Uh, and now we're in this new world where it's okay to say I don't know, it's okay to ask questions, and you're being rewarded for saying those things like, I don't know, I want to learn more and I want to get some better answers. And given that environment, that's what, you know, over the next 15, 20 years, but more importantly over the next three to five years, is what is going to allow those very large firms to adopt really cool things. Models is the really thing, the cool thing I'm excited about, right? So the ability to tell our clients, hey, here's all the data, here are all the features that you can build models on on your own, that's great from all these different connected sources. But here's one step further, you can actually buy the model and run it on your environment, and your data is going to be different than your peers, and your assumptions are going to be different than your peers, and the results of this model will be different than your peers, and you can tweak that. But now we're able to, to kind of skip from that you know, data, what happened in the past to what will happen in the future very, very quickly. So I'm really excited about that. I think that will create a proliferation effect across the entire market. All right. Well, LD, wonderful to talk with you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk. Thanks for having me. Great to be here.